The uncomfortable truth is, we get the government we deserve. Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And I was thinking about this last night as I was falling asleep. And the government that we have at the end of the day, for better or worse, whether you like, to it, like it or not, or want to admit it or not, is the one that you deserve. It, it's the one that you chose. One way or another, either through, either through action or, or inaction. And let's talk about what I mean by that. So I think we all believe that the government is corrupt. It's just a matter of how corrupt you think they are and, and how, how bad it really is. But it's not corrupt everywhere. And, and, and what I mean is when you look at local elections, like electing your local senator or congressman or even more local, you know, we're talking about like city council officials and all that. Are there pockets of corruption across the nation? For sure, absolutely. But not all of them are to the same degree corrupted or, or evil. And the way we, our government still, for the most part, actually does function is we still elect leaders to go and, and serve for us. Now the presidential corruption uh, election, presidential election last time was obviously uh, horribly corrupt, but that's, that's not my main point here. I, let's just look at Congress, for example, and let's look specifically at the state of South Dakota. South Dakota is a state that is as red as it gets, right? Has been for a while, votes consistently red, sends three Republican representatives, one for the House, two for the Senate, has a Republican governor, most of local officials everywhere are Republican, deep red South Dakota. When you look at who they send to represent them to Congress, to say it's embarrassing is an understatement. First off, you have John Thune, who has been in government since 1985. He has been in government in some form or capacity. Been in the Senate for the last 20 some years, just got elected to his fourth uh, term. In the primaries, he trounced his competition at like 72 percent, okay? Uh, sailed through the election, obviously, and, and won the seat. John Thune is the whip uh, for the Senate and has done nothing uh, of actual value, as far as I can determine, ever. Uh, he voted for a variety of bills that you should absolutely abhor as far as their, you know, protecting small government. He talks a talk, but he doesn't actually do anything. Uh, horrible senator, not helpful to the nation, let alone South Dakota at all. Uh, then you have Mike Rounds, been a senator since 2005, been in government since like 2001. Again, nothing of value. What if, what if, you've never even heard the name Mike Rounds. You have no idea who he is. Why? Because he doesn't do anything to actually protect, preserve the nation, right? And then you have Mr. Dusty Johnson, who was appointed to his position as the, uh, our delegate to the House when Christy Noem retired from that because she became governor, and um, then has since been reelected, sailed through his primary, I guess maybe not sailed through, I think he won at like 59% of his primary. I have no idea who actually primaried for this guy. He's either a complete idiot who has no idea where he is, or he's just like a really, really good corrupt person who plays like a happy silly go guy, but is actually like maniacal behind the scenes. It's one of the two, either way, it's really bad. And these are the representatives that South Dakota, deep red South Dakota chooses to send to the federal government. Now I say chooses to send because that's what's happening, right? Maybe there's some minor corruption here or there in these elections, maybe there's some issues, whatever. But at the end of the day, people are going out and voting for these people, right? People are going out and saying, well, yeah, I mean, I support them, they did a good job. You know, I see signs, uh, they, 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 they're, you know, representing South Dakota, gonna fight back Biden and that whole, that horrible agenda, right? Like they don't, people are voting for these people and either they're not paying attention or they don't know. I don't know who primaries and isn't paying attention, honestly, that, that continues to bewilder me. But people are making choices to support these candidates. The entire world is burning down and falling apart, but people think that these incompetent, corrupt idiots who could not actually recognize evil if it slapped them in the face are the ones to do the job. They're not getting voted out. They're not getting rejected. They're not getting protested. They're, they're, they're just, people are just quietly going to the polls and supporting these people with their vote. 
and then sending them to represent them. And again, these people have been at it for 20 some years. How has the state of the nation gone in the last 20 some years? Now, is that entirely the government's fault? No, there are a lot of issues at play here. Let's, let's be the first to recognize that. But if things continue to get worse and you keep putting the same people in charge, what, what do you think is gonna happen? Right? And that might, the South Dakota is just a great microcosm of the entire nation, right? Now, yeah, you have your Rand Pauls out there, you have your Thomas Masseys out there, you have people out there that are, you know, attempting to do something to stem back the tide of debauchery. But by and large, that's the state we're in. And you can't just point to every single uh, governmental thing and just say, well, it's corrupt, that's the problem. Money's in it, that's the problem. You, you can't do that. There's, there, at some point, people are choosing their own downfall, either through complete ignorance or stupidity or some combination of both. And I'm sure corruption's a factor across the board somewhere, right? But I don't think for stuff like this, that's the major factor. Now again, there are a variety of issues here, but the other one that I think is relevant to this video is the fact that the federal government, of course, has way too much power, right? Whether or not uh, you like John Thune is, is, is irrelevant. If you live in uh, New York City, for example, and some guy from South Dakota can vote one way in the Senate and that has a major direct impact on your life, that's a problem, right? America was never supposed to work that way. We all know that and, and, and the government isn't supposed to function the way it currently functions. And the fact that the federal government has become this massive behemoth of destruction that spends all of your money, that sucks life from you via tax dollars out of your paycheck and every other which way means and how, um, that's a big problem. And so we elect these people into these positions that are making giant decisions for the entire nation that one, they should never be empowered to make to begin with. And two, we keep sending them there expecting different results. So, you know, we talk about being past the point of no return. I have a video series on that. But I just think that at the end of the day, we are choosing our own downfall. Now, you're mad to watch this, like, no, Dylan, I'm not choosing that. I'm, I'm voting against it. You know, I'm, I'm voting in the primaries. I'm, I'm doing all this other stuff. Hey, that's great. Keep doing that. But just understand that at the end of the day, most people are either, like I said, through ignorance or stupidity, still choosing to elect people who are not just failing at their jobs through stupidity or incompetence, but might actually be working against their interests while paying lip service to it. Think about it, who do you know that's supporting these people that just doesn't see it? Do brave deeds and endure.